Here we are. Yeah. 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 Now. Yeah. Hi, everybody. We'd like to welcome everybody to our very first episode of Love, Beats, and Marriage. Hashtag LBM. I'm Sunny Knight, and this is... Hashtag LBM Kings. LBM Kings. There you go. Yeah. And I'm Sunny Knight, as I already said. Yeah. And this is my wife. Ty Scott King. Okay. Hashtag. 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 There you go. And what we're going to be doing, we're going to be do a, a weekly uh, episodic or episode so just talking about growth, our marriage from a uh, definitely a Christian perspective. Uh, but even if you're not Christian, we're praying that uh, these episodes uh, minister you in some way, in some way to help you, but ultimately to glorify God in doing so. And we're going to expose ourselves. So uh, it's going to be a journey for everybody that's listening, watching, and even ourselves because uh, we don't have any script. This is unscripted, so we don't know what we're going to say. I don't know what I'm going to say, and my wife probably worried about that, but it is what it is, so we're just going to jump <laughs> into... Uh, they tell us, what, what topic are we talking about today? Today, we're going to... Okay, so we're going to talk about our very first topic, because this is our very first episode. One topic that I know my husband particularly is fond of. Money and marriage. <laughs> money and marriage money and marriage money and marriage money and marriage, money and marriage. see when my wife first got married before we got married we've been married for like seven years so oh, oh, sorry I was, um, I was singing my remix of your favorite my show. favorite tv show of all time all the times at least comedy we'll go with comedy for that but a lot of people may be shocked uh but it's married with children i grew up in a dysfunctional life, so that ministered to me when I was growing up, and I still have a fun liking to that show. So, yeah. You know, so that's anyway. why that was yeah. my remix. But yeah. Mike wasn't really, he wasn't really paying attention. So. No, because I was trying to stay on topic. Because you yeah. know, if I, I go off topic, thousand. this show would not be, it'll be uh, love, anime, and whatever's on <laughs> wrestling this week. So, okay, okay. Let me, let me help you stay on topic. Right. All right. So, go. we are talking about. Money and marriage, and Money when we marriage. first got, well, we've been, uh, sheesh, we've done a poor job of introducing ourselves, I think, as far as who we are, what we're, we said our names, but. Okay, like uh, what I we mean, do? The, this is called love, love, beats, and marriage. So we're going to talk about those things, right. but we haven't said how long we've been married. I said seven years, baby. You oh, that's, oh, that's Bam. what I'm doing my own. Remake. I already got one. We're scoring, fellas. <laughs> one for the kid. Right here. We remember, because we forget something. Trust me. We don't know. Okay. Seven seven years. Seven, seven years. years. All right. So what were you saying? What, was your, what were you starting to say about we've been married seven years and what? No, I was just saying, I was just correcting that we've been married seven years. Oh, okay. I thought you had started a story about money and marriage and you started it by saying we've been married seven years yeah i mean uh, basically the fact that we've been married for seven years so when i got uh i was a bachelor for of course most of my life so my uh philosophy before me and my wife got together was uh once when all the bills were paid whatever money that was left over was mine so who else uh, is what you can see? well i mean you know saving that one oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, wait that it being your money didn't include saving? It, yeah, putting it on my mattress or in my Nikes or whatever the case may be. <laughs> Sometimes in DVD boxes. I used to put money in DVD boxes. I remember finding money. It's like, whoa, $20, $40. Serious, I used to put money in DVD boxes. That so, you got from Blockbuster? Uh, at the time, yeah, it was a mix of Blockbuster and Walmart. I was buying, you know, the discount bin. So I, I got a lot of DVDs from there. Uh, so, yeah, so that was my philosophy. And, uh, once when we get got married, uh, I thought I knew uh, had a pretty good handle on finances, but uh, let you explain on uh, how how we came to pass on uh, this money situation. <laughs> how we came to pass. Yeah, how we came to pass. Okay, well I have to tell the backstory of how I even came to have a relationship with money, which I think you should tell your backstory too. I mean, you said you were a bachelor, but like growing mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. What was your whole thing? How did you learn about money oh, and oh. how to use it? Well, me, I came from a, uh, a let's say, an old Negro spiritual philosophy. <laughs> what? Uh, what oh, yeah, I'm sweating. It's, it's hot. Y'all can't tell these things, but it's hot. Thank you. Thank you, baby. 
But uh, yeah, my mom, her philosophy to this day, that's sad to say, my mom doesn't have a bank account. My brothers don't have a bank account. They don't have any cards. Um, just a lot of stuff that, you know, growing up, my mom, she didn't trust banks because a lot of black people, especially in the South, they thought uh, banks steal your money. And she still thinks that way to this day. So um, basically once when I got my first job and everything, I had to teach myself on how to go to a bank or open up a bank account. And it had its challenges with that. So the majority of my adult life, I kept some money in a bank uh, just so I could have a debit card. But the majority of my money and, and cash and everything, my wife would tell you, I used to keep a lot of cash on me because I think it seeped into me with my philosophy of my mom that, you know, hey, you can't trust these banks right here. Yeah, when Mike first came to visit me, we lived, what, like two hours apart? Yeah, something like that. Okay, so we lived in Alabama at the time. That's where Mike was born and raised, and I had moved there. Roll Tide. I had moved there because life. And um, the first time Mike came to visit me, he, he we went to like the movies or some. No, 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 this was before the movie. He came to visit. Our first technical date, real date, was on Thanksgiving. And he came for Thanksgiving dinner, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I don't remember why, but he pulled out like all this money. I don't remember either. And I was like, why are you walking around with like hundreds of dollars on you? I think I was keeping, because I, I used to keep my car keys in my front pocket, of course. So I think I would have to go in my pocket, but on top of my car keys, my money was on top of my car keys. So I think I just reached in there and I had to take the money out. Not that I was flexing or flossing, because I, really I really didn't care. But <laughs> it was just basically, I need to get to my keys. I didn't care who saw, you know. <laughs> So I was just shocked by these hundreds of dollars that he was just walking around with and he said that this was like his regular flex. So I convinced him, because he had a bank account, so I convinced you to not come around, not just have all this money on you. Right, right. So the next time, which was might have been like the next weekend or I don't know when, you came to visit and we went to the movies. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. We went to the movies and you spent your last $20 that you had. And for some reason, you didn't have your debit card. Yeah, I didn't have my debit card with me for some reason. I think I left them in my pants pocket or something because I never really <laughs> did need it because I always carry cash. So right. I didn't make sure that I leave home with my debit card in most cases because... At that time, cash was king, like it was the olden days, but, you know. It was the summer of 2011. No, 12. 2012. Um, so, he used his last $20, but he didn't tell me that at the time when we were at the movies. But I think when we got back to my house, he was dropping me off, and he was like, that was my last $20, so can I borrow some money for gas to get back an uh -huh. hour and a half, two hour drive. Right. So, I don't know, I guess maybe we went to ATM or maybe I had some cash, I don't yeah. know. But then I do remember that the very next weekend when you came, I opened the door and the first thing you had in your hand was how was much the money. money. <laughs> exact change. <laughs> I was like, it's not a problem. Oh yeah, it He was like, oh uh, yeah. You need your money back. Here you go. I saw enough Lifetime channels to, to see how this could go <laughs> sideways real quick. So, you know, the man always, when he, he sweep off the feet and then he just start asking for money. And, <laughs> That's a joke. And before you know it, you wake up dead the next day. <laughs> you wake up dead. Waking up dead. I was you wake choking up in advance of the joke that I knew was coming. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the joke exactly, but I figured there was one coming. Mm -hmm. Am I sweating a lot? It's not. It's, we're going but you can't through, tell. I'm looking at the camera. You really can't tell, so it don't matter. We're going through a heat wave here in California. The great state of California. Yes. We're in Huntington Beach. And because we live by the ocean, they don't feel like we deserve My, air conditioning. Well, they, we do have the windows and the doors <laughs> closed because uh, we don't want any outside noise to mess with the recording. Huh. Uh, Giving y'all some behind the scenes stuff. But yes. yeah, I mean, yeah, it is burning up. I'm looking at the thermostat do right it. now. Don't do it. Just yeah, do it. it's don't burning up in here. But this is worth it. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's Mike's backstory about money. So mine was pretty opposite. My mother, when I was in like third grade, asked You want to share people you're Jamaican as well, probably. Okay, yes. So this is Jamaican. Yes. <laughs> I don't 
think I could. Oh, I'm sure there are there are other people, other people, other nationalities. But yes, my family is Jamaican. My parents were born and raised in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I was born in Jamaica. All that stuff. I, I was raised in America. Though. So when I was in the third grade. I just realized I don't have my ring on. Do you? No, I don't have mine. The, my ring is right here. I left it on the counter. Um, right here. I'll put it on. Just my ring how is not right there. No, yours <laughs> in the bathroom. We don't worry about it, though. We married. I mean, everybody here know we married. I mean, we know we married. Not everybody don't know, but I know we married. So. Okay, me too. So, when I was in the third grade, I don't remember why, but my mother asked me, did I know how to write a check? And I was like... Well, I probably knew what a check was because I probably seen her write them, but I was like, yeah, no. And she was like, what are they? Them, them never teach you how to write that check yet. I'm like, no, because I'm only like seven, seven. or eight. Yeah. <laughs> so she taught me how to write a check, I think like that day, that minute. And then she took me to open a bank account. Well, I couldn't open it, but she took me to the bank and we did whatever so that I could figure out the value of having a bank and so that was my introduction to handling my finances but then when I got to college of course well not of course because everybody doesn't do this but when I got to college I got all these credit cards and got into all this debt <laughs> and on top of student loan debt right um so when I came out of college, I didn't even know what my credit score was. I didn't even know how to check my credit score. So I probably wouldn't have wanted to though because it probably was terrible. So anyway, ruined my credit. And then many years later, fixed my credit. Got it better, got it better. And I was just always very conscious. I've, all, I've lived on my own since I was 18. So always had to, you know, if I needed my family's help, they gave it to me. But tried to just be as independent as possible. So always paid bills, always had a bank account. Um, and so when when Mike and I met and started dating and you know, we had these stories where he left his money or had all this wad of money and then we got married and maybe like our first King family meeting. <laughs> Let me tell you about this King family meeting. <laughs> I was sitting on the couch, living my life. You know, we've been married. Your best you know, life. Living my life. I ain't saying best life. That's so cliche. But I was living my life. So I was, I was pretty good. You know, had my feet up. I think I had a nice cold uh, beverage at that time. Maybe Powerade. I don't know. But it was something that I liked to uh, drink. And my wife, I could see her creeping behind the couch from uh, my peripheral. So I'm like, okay. Something's gonna go down. So she uh, politely say, uh, whenever you get through watching that little show you watching, uh, we need to talk about how we gonna pay these bills. I'm sure I didn't say that because how yeah. we were gonna pay the bills. Yeah, yeah, really yeah, 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 yeah. Issue. Now it was. I knew it wasn't uh, how we gonna pay the bills because we ain't got no money. It was more <laughs> how we gonna pay these bills because it's more important things we could be doing. And you sitting here watching anime, so <laughs> you didn't watch anime. That I knew of for yes, like the first year. I didn't know you were watching. You probably watched it after. I, yeah, I was doing it after you slept. I was watching the whole season. That's definitely gonna be an episode. Yeah. The life of Mike after oh. Ty has gone to sleep. Yeah, I, I was living a whole <laughs> different life after you went to sleep. I had to. Um, but yeah, so immediately I already you had knew. to. I had to. Yeah. Just so I could just keep my sanity. We'll talk about that. You know, remember we got some. Uh, that, that's gonna be another show. That's gonna be another <laughs> that show. Makes it sound really uh, bad. Yeah, that'll be another show. But anyway, so wait, I'll, wait, wait, wait. I just I don't need you to say yeah, because that confirms that it's really it was really bad. What? I said that sounds really bad that you had to do these things after I went to. No, the no, no. We were just two weeks in the marriage, so it wasn't bad. It couldn't have been bad, and no. But I'm just saying, I, it's just, these were habits that I was used to doing anyway, and I wasn't going to just walk away from those. Got it. You know, that's all. So, um, yeah, back to the story. So, so I already knew automatically, like, hey, you need to pause. We had, we could pause the station. So that's what I did. I went ahead and paused it, and I turned it off, and I'm like, okay, let's talk. And my wife, she brought out this red book, and she had glasses <laughs> on. And I, I don't think I never really saw her wore glasses up until then. I didn't know she wore glasses. 
So I knew it was here. I'm not making this up. I'm not embellishing just to make sure it's funny or anything else. And you had the glasses on your nose, too. So it was like, who is this one? And you 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 came and you sat down all gingerly and, and quietly and you opened up the book like the Bible and you got to the page and I saw all these marks in the page already. Found red. A red book. So I'm like, What's um, gonna what's gonna go on here? Happening. I'm, I'm like, how many bills we got? Unbeknownst <laughs> to me, I I didn't realize her bills became our bills. It wasn't her bills and my bills. It's our bills now. You also had yeah, bills. Yeah, I had bills too. So it was just a combination. So I didn't know it was just a combination. And that's why I was intimidated. I'm like, this is a lot of stuff that got to get paid. And at the time, and we'll talk about that another time, man, I was getting paid under, I mean, it was, under, it was, it was under, awful. It was under. below minimum wage. I wasn't making nothing. And Dothan, Alabama, beautiful uh, town, beautiful city. Alabama. I'm not gonna say it, yeah, but you, you ain't getting paid nothing. Seriously, you ain't getting paid nothing. So I'm, 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 you know, I'm already sweating bullets, and I'll let you uh, pick up the story. <laughs> you pick up the story. So my parents, from the time I was in high school, well, middle school, my mom and my stepdad, they would have like their finance meetings that at the time I didn't know about. But after like becoming an adult, I realized they have these meetings once a month or however much. So I'm like, cool, now we're married. We shall have our gang family financial meetings. And so I did what I'd always done. I pulled out my red book because that's the book I used to track my finances and my life and make sure the bills got paid on time, the rent, the lights, the car note, the, I didn't have a car note. That was the best. Neither one of us had a car note. Yeah, neither of us had car notes. Our cars were paid in full. And I had a raggedy car, so don't don't think it was, it was a 1993 <laughs> Buick LeSabre. A 93 Buick LeSabre, that's what I had. But it ran good, so at the time. It got you from Dothan to Montgomery. Oh yeah, plenty of time. Um, so I was used to, that's how you do your bills every right. month or every week or whenever you need to. So I didn't, I don't know if I knew you were um, like. Economically savvy? No, I didn't know when I pulled out the red book that you were wanting to like run like the runaway slave. I knew you were. <laughs> I, I didn't want to use that. I was trying to think of anything else, but I couldn't think of something that would yeah. put fear I, I in mean, somebody's heart that made him want to run away. I mean, and, and, and you, we talked about this a, a lot, and it's just, uh, you know, because we just came from two different worlds of how handling finances, especially once we start talking about tithing. I was a, um, I was a fair weather tithe. And that fair weather tithe that went in, it's once when I paid up all my other bills and bought a little bit of food. Um, is there a comic book I wanted to buy? Or is there gonna be a DVD? Cause a lot of my money went into DVD, anything extra at the time. So yeah, I'll do that thing on my eye because I'm talking, I'm trying to think my words through. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so I was like, um, yeah, I was scared. I was petrified because I already knew my wife made more than me. And then I knew that we were in Dothan and I was already super frustrated with the fact that I couldn't find, I was a chef at the time, but oh man, it's some nightmares work being a chef in Dothan, Alabama. I, it's like I kept running into these undercover crooks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these undercover yeah. crooks, like they were, they, they, they they were playing spin the wheel on it's my check going to be able to cash. <laughs> yeah, and I never experienced that. So, yeah. So then, you know, grip with all that and then the fact that we going through how to pay the bills and then also, they go been lost to my wife. Uh, my credit score was terrible. So... I think, I think we, I'm, you know what? We did marriage counseling. Shout yeah. out to Pastor Brian Horn. Who Pastor Brian Horn, I love you, Pastor Brian. Was um, the oversight pastor, associate He was pastor. the best, he was the best ever. I've never been married before, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. He's the associate yeah. pastor yeah. at North Creek Christian Church. Shout out to Pastor Hart Ramsey as well mm -hmm. um, in Montgomery. So we did, we did do marriage counseling, which was, oh, if we started with Pastor James. We started with Pastor James in Dothan, and then um, 
Pastor Brian inherited mm -hmm. us because I was spending time in Montgomery mm -hmm. over that summer. So we did talk about a lot of that stuff. We dug into our finances and credit scores and behavior and backstory and background of church and it was it was intense. But it was um, great. It was good for us. Yeah, it wasn't that intense as so, me. Before we got married, I used to go to Walmart, and I used to go to Walmart all the time. But there were times where Every day, my I would I would swipe day. my card, and before I swipe my card, I would put a prayer. I was like, "Ooh, please let this go through." And sometimes it would go through extra long. I I'd be like, "Ooh, come on!" And some of you people, financially challenged people, I probably can, you know. But why were you doing that? Because I mean, I wasn't the 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 money that I was. The money that I had in the bank, I was not keeping track of it. Oh, okay. So I didn't know, you know. So there'd be times where I would physically in my head, I was like, I know I've been swiping a lot today, but <laughs> and the only way at the time I knew how to check my balance was either go to the machine or call on the phone, which I used to do at times too. And they were like, you have a balance of and anything that w that that started with the one, I would be I I would hang up. I like I don't need to know. I'm good. It could have I been hear, hear the one dollar. Oh uh, no! Nah. Like, no, I would say one hundred. When okay. I hear the one hundred, boom! I, I hang up. Good, <laughs> good. But when <laughs> when the lady would get, I'm like, your balance is. I'm sorry. I hang up because I know if you got you got the IBR lady apologizing before she gives you your uh, your balance, <laughs> you know you're in trouble. So in real days. I ain't go out. I want to spend it none. I knew not to fight. You in trouble. So, so yeah. That, that stuff I didn't know. I was not aware of those things until just now. So, yeah. Um, so it was, it was an adjustment because now I have, not have to, but now I'm sharing a bank account with somebody and we went all in. I know some people get married and they don't share their bank accounts or, you know, just their finances are still separate and, you know, they're I don't know how you, I don't know how you even live in a marriage like that because to me, that's like, well, if that's how you operate in your marriage, that's how you operate in your marriage, but <laughs> some gonna have to come to a halt after a while. I well, think some people still have separate accounts, but they also have a shared account. Yeah, yeah, I get that. So, and then some that. people just keep their stuff separate. That right. is not us. We, you no. know, just went all in and... Sorry, I'm doing this because my hair is, I was like. Are you about to sit on your hair? I think I was. That would have been a blooper. You would um, yank it one, boom, hit on it. We would have had to start over. And then you came back and then it would have been another different story. You know, like, <laughs> I failed. Yeah. Oh gosh. Um, so, what's that saying? No, you were talking about, it was a difference in when first you didn't know about the fact that I had, uh, I was going through the things with my Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So we went all in and shared a bank account and all that stuff. So getting used to someone else pulling out money and I'd been in a situation prior where the person was like very lax with money. Yeah. And here's the thing, <laughs> so, I didn't I didn't know, I'm sorry to cut you off, I didn't okay. know my wife was a pull out the bank tracker. And what that mean <laughs> is she tracked how much, I didn't know she was, you know, I would come home after a hard day's work of uh, getting pennies thrown at me for my paycheck. <laughs> and she would be sitting on the couch with oh, the God. red book in her lap. And she was like, hey, babe, I just want you to know is if you need to start making more snacks or whatever the case may be, because you have quite a bit of debits uh, at the same gas station for 222 Because the, Mike would get snacks every day. Yeah, I me, would. At the time, I wasn't working from home. I think I was teaching at yeah, the you time. Yeah, doing some things with the museum, kind of in the same teaching realm. And I didn't um, go out for lunch. I, I work from home now, but I still right. don't. I've just never been a eat out for lunch every day person or get snacks at the gas station every single day. So it was like, what do you, if you, let's just buy this stuff when we go to the grocery That's store, what then that way you won't have to keep debiting money and then it's like I'm trying to keep because I'm trying to keep track I don't want the money to go into negative because I've been in a situation right. when it was not my fault yeah. that the account that I was sharing was going into the negative and then uh -huh. you pay these fees it's just I didn't want that like I I had not grown up doing that 
on my own. So when I was in that situation, it was like the worst. Right. And I didn't want to go back to that negative bank account and all this, all those fees right. and just all the drama that comes with that. So I really swung to the opposite direction and I- Really hard. You swung for the fences <laughs> on that. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, because honestly, if I would have just been, the communication is is, is is key because if she would have communicated at the time about her fears, she did down the road and we, you know, we unpacked that. But, it, and if I would have, uh, fellas, if I would have just, uh, just been able to communicate to her the fact that it wasn't all about the money because if she saw it, it was just little bits of pieces. It was really that it was a routine that I got to be away from my work and I got to, it was escapism, really. It was escapism spin. So I, I just enjoyed the journey of walking through the the super, the little mini mart thing to look to see what I want. It was just the whole experience thing. It's just like it was with Walmart. I got to uh, to go to the even to this day. I love going to the um, electronics place. That's my favorite place in uh, Walmart. And then it's just really just I I just like to have experience. Uh, but I didn't realize that her fears with the uh, economic situation of us being broke, uh, not that we were rolling in the dough at the time, but we, we, we were not uh, destitute as a close friend of mine, Kevin, used to always say. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Kev. Um, we'll talk about Kevin one day. Um, but anyway, that's a, oh man. Friends. That's three episodes. How many of us have? Been? Yeah, I know. So we have these, I have this fear and you have this habit and we just didn't unpack those fully in all those weeks of marriage counseling and then they just spilled out in that first year and we at some point got real with each other and said well this is why I'm checking every day because I just right. want to make sure it's not <laughs> that I'm just stalking you I just want to make sure nothing goes wrong um, but I guess ultimately what we learned was just to communicate better um, and then we also set in place the whole, if you're gonna make a transaction, like what's the dollar amount transaction we need to talk to each other about? Then that way I'm calm because I know he's not making, buying a Lamborghini and throwing us into <laughs> destitution. I should, I don't know if that's a word. But um, yeah, so setting that dollar amount where it's like, I'm not gonna go over this unless we talk about it. That really helped me a lot. Right. And, and, and uh, I would love for you guys to give us feedback on that. If that's something you guys are still going through or, or if you overcame it and what you did to do it. I know for us, because um, it's, I mean, finance, that's always in marriage. You look at, you know, the top uh, three reasons why people get into divorce and finances is always going back and forth with the one and two spots. And, and um you, it's very seldom you're gonna marry someone that would have the same, same exact philosophy. I mean, we neither of us are big spenders. No, so, we're not. You know, our limit of when we tell each other we're gonna spend is probably pretty low to a lot of people because we don't just spend, spend, spend. Right. So in that way, we're both kind of. I'm, I'm a little bit more frugal. <laughs> you think so? But neither of us are like big spenders. But uh -huh. yeah, definitely talking through all that stuff. And, um, you know, we talked about a lot of marriage counseling, but there was still a lot to learn after we actually got married. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, and we're still learning. But yeah, uh -huh. that was our marriage and money story. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that a lot of people are definitely dealing with a lot of stuff where it's like I I'm trying to figure out my spouse's money stuff and figure out how we can work together to um, you know benefit right because ultimately it's a shared pool of money and got to make it work right and I would encourage those people that are watching that are married or in a relationship or whatever the case may be um, the star, uh, definitely if you're not, start referring it as us and our. Use those words instead of my money, um, or my car, and my, because I mean, especially. I, I would, I don't know. I would say if you're not married, it's not ours. It's mine and yours. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. I mean, on that, on, on that level, yeah. 
I'm, I'm talking about the people who are married, but they don't feel like they're married. You oh. know what I'm talking about. Okay. But that's what I'm, I'm more or less talking about. And that's a whole nother show, too, we're yeah. going to talk about down the road, too. Um, so, yeah, I mean, um, definitely, you know, because we all have our insecurities and, and everybody uh, has a... Uh, has a fear of some sort when it when it's talking about money. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some people come where money was not a big issue in the house. That those are far in between. Right. So usually there's an emotion. I wouldn't say fear. I'm sorry, but there's some sort of emotion that's always attached when money comes up and when finances come up with you. And a lot of that is built off of how you were brought up and, and under the households because you didn't grow up under the same household. And if you did, you got some problems if you married. <laughs> now that's another show. <laughs> Yeah, a, a whole nother, yeah, a whole very show. intense. Oh, now that could be an asterisk by it. You know, maybe y'all two different families living in two different. You know, that happens sometimes. You know, but even if it's the Brady Bun situation, <laughs> that gets kind of dicey. All right. but, so we're gonna end on that note. Brady Bunch ended. dicey situation. I went crazy about the Brady like Bunch. My, my wife was. Yeah. Be I was because there were six of us. So we, like you like the Cosby we Show, and I was like. Yeah. I don't remember the coffee show thing. Just one. But anyway, let's wrap this maybe you maybe you saw some things that were to come. Um, yeah. So thank y'all for watching our very first episode of. Um, I was gonna say married with children. <laughs> <laughs> love, love, peace, and, and marriage. marriage.